everyone. I'm Linda McHenry, host of The Writer's Voice, where we focus on writers and their craft and their books. And today, Sarah Smith is joining me. She's a published writer, multiple mysteries and novels. Um, a number of them have received awards, especially the Agatha Award, the most notable. She lives in Boston with her family and, of course, not enough cats. Who can ever have enough cats? Hi, Sarah. How are you? Hello, Linda. It's so good to be here. Glad to have you. I see you're on the Titanic. Is there a particular reason why you're sitting on the deck of the Titanic? Well, um, not only is it thematic for <laughs> this particular time, but I recently published a book about the Titanic called Crimes and Survivors, actually about the survivors of the Titanic, uh -huh. which taught me a lot about survival. Yeah, well, survival is something we all know about, at least, you know, now with the pandemic. Um, obviously, you wrote the book before the pandemic. Is it is it hitting home now? Boy, I thought I was writing about something entirely different. And I realize I'm, I'm writing about how you can survive, how you can live your life even more, how you can um, learn to balance between being a good person for yourself, taking care of yourself, and being a good person for and taking care of other people. Yeah, it's a tough, it can be a challenge. There's a lot of mm -hmm. conflicts and, and things going on. Mm -hmm. um, did you have any issues? Well, now, when was the book released? Because I think it was released during the pandemic as well. So you must have some marketing challenges as well. Oh my goodness. Yes, April 15th. And we had a big selection of um, appearances and book festivals and every one of them. Ah, and so you've been doing Zoom things and you've been doing virtual stuff mm -hmm. now, huh? Yeah. How do you think that's going to impact the future of, of publishing and marketing? Um, I think that I've been going to so many events by people where I would never have gone to the physical event, either because it's in San Francisco Mm -hmm. or because um you know how it is it gets to be seven o'clock and you think it's going to start at seven thirty, and i have to get out of the house and get dressed and and all of that <laughs> stuff rather than just sitting down at your computer and oh look there's yeah. michael chabon and i i like red and, and <laughs> whoa i'm gonna miss this for the world yeah. it, it's um it takes away barriers as well as as creating them. Well, and you know, one of the things that I've found is that so much of our communication is body language. And you did, I don't think a lot of people, I've been teaching that for years. And so many people, I think, didn't believe that. Um, words are important. We know that as writers. Um, tone of voice, though, is probably more important and body language is more important. And I think everybody's realizing that now and, and, um, it, it, it's important. And I think we're reaching out to more people than we would have before because we're probably seeing more people now, even though we're not physically seeing them. It is, it is a little bit more tiring being on Zoom because you have to make sure that you're presenting yourself. You're really out there. You're being, you're being visible. And when we did the, the lunch event for Crimes and Survivors, I had people from Germany, and one of the one of the major Titanic experts showed up, and he said, "Oh look, here is my deck chair from Titanic." <laughs> you don't get that with an in-person event. No, you don't. And so you, you might get more people physically from the area, but as you said, you you have a wider reach. And I think I think also one of the things with Zoom, you know, I teach a lot in, in, in another, in a business industry and it's very professional and stuffy and everything's got to be done a certain way. And I think Zoom has relaxed a lot of people. Uh, and I think we're probably seeing people more authentically and genuinely. Yeah. Um, so with your book, okay, that is out now. Where can people get that book? And, and, and what about the book do you want them to know? Uh, isn't that an interesting question, where you can get the book? <laughs> Uh, it is available through um, through bookshop.org, and the last the last I checked before I fixed something on Ingram, they were having difficulty getting the hardback. Oh, really? I have not yet seen the hardback. The book no? is not for a month. Oh no! Uh, and you you know that it's very hard um, to arrange distribution. Yeah. 
my local bookshop, brooklinebooksmith.com, uh, is going to have signed hardbacks available. Good. And I am, I am sending anyone who, um, who buys a hardback and cannot get it signed right now, I'm sending them a handwritten postcard. All right. Um, and the, the URL on that is tinyurl.com. You deserve a postcard. <laughs> so what do you have in the works now? Or, you know, what are you working on now? You know, a lot of people are saying the pandemic or the, the not the pandemic. Well, yeah, the pandemic and the, the shutdown is going to last long. Other people are saying no. How have you incorporated that, that into your current project? Well, oddly enough, I was writing a book before all of this started that included a pandemic. It's a, it's a 19th century book set in Brazil. Um, it's something of a fantasy and it has gigantic, um, gigantic eagles whose claws are this big. Oh my goodness. Yeah, a friend of mine um, gave this to me. Um, and it's, it's an absolute delight to write. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you think it's going to sell? Do you think there's a lot of other writers who are writing? I mean, you just happened to be writing about a pandemic before what happened. Do you think there's going to be writers who are specifically writing about the pandemic or not? I mean, you and I were on a Zoom meeting a week ago where somebody said he specifically is not including pandemic mm -hmm. in, in the book he's writing now. But what are your thoughts about that? And my thoughts about writing this book are pretty much the same as about writing any book. I do whatever the little voices tell me to do. <laughs> um, it, it, it has certainly affected um, the sales of crimes and survivors, at least, at least short term, that I published it in the middle of the pandemic, that I said to myself, this book is about survival. Maybe somebody needs it. Yeah. And I don't want to be the person who is dying of COVID-19 and saying to herself, shoot, why didn't I publish my book? Yeah. And with this one, after a certain point in my writing process, the book has its own mind. And I could say to myself, I will write a book that is potentially a little bit more comfortable, but that's not me. And this mm -hmm. book is me, or I am this book for the time being. And um, I think just being, being true to yourself and being true to, to your writing process means that you do what you need to do and sometimes not even what you want to do. Or what, and, and, you, or what your cautious self wants to do. And I, I think that's probably good advice because if you're if you're conflicted within yourself, that's going to come through, and you're not your, your end result, your product, you know. And as as much as you don't want to think about it as a product, you'd rather think of it as a work of art. Uh, it is a product, you know. And 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 the people, your readers, are buying your product, and um, yeah. you you want your audience to 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 see your best work. And um, and oddly enough, the the people who have been reading crimes and survivors are tremendously enthusiastic about it. But I know that the people who are looking for a nice cozy mm -hmm. um, with, with no glimpses at the dark side mm -hmm. probably don't want to read this book now. Maybe they don't want to read it later. Well, and um, that's it. Everybody handles things differently. Some people do hold up things. well in a crisis and they fall apart later. That's me. And then other people can't manage during the crisis. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards they pick up the pieces and we probably need both kinds of people. <laughs> what kinds of comfort uh, of uh, reading are you doing? I know I'm doing a lot of comfort reading. I'm rereading stuff. And um, you need that soothing. You need that comfort. Absolutely. Part of survival is do what makes you happy. Be kind to yourself. You're right. You want to ease the process, ease the process I know, along. Friends. So what are other, what are your writer friends? Are they, are they in the same boat as you? Do they, are they finding the same things? Are you seeing somebody, are you seeing other people do different things? You know, you mentioned in the beginning with survival, you have to take care of yourself and take care of other people as well. 
Um, how, how are, do you think just the writing community, do you, how do you think everybody's handling it? Are they doing pretty well or, you know, cause some industries, I mean, we're lucky as writers, you know, if, if we spend, for those of us who write from home and spend the majority of our time writing, we can still do that. But, but how about writers you think who like, you know, have a day job and have to do their writing and, and, you know, their whole life has changed. How are they I, doing? I think that, um, some people. I was talking to um, a friend of mine, Dale Phillips, who was reading on Tea Time Readings, mm -hmm. which is my my writing, mm -hmm. uh, my reading um, series mm -hmm. last week. And Dale was saying, I have finished a book. I'm three quarters of the way through another book <laughs> because this is his way of surviving. Yeah. And some people are finding it really hard to mm -hmm. figure out where they are as writers right now, and that's good too. Um, if if you write modern fiction, are you going to talk about the pandemic? Um, how are you going to treat it? And um, are trying to figure out where they are in terms of marketing, in terms of publicity as writers. This is a very tough time. People who ordinarily would do podcasts, they have their kids at home. Um, or they're taking care of family members and they just aren't able to be as responsive as they ordinarily would. Right. Well, and, every, and everybody has their different strengths and weaknesses and the resources that they typically call on aren't available. So they need to yeah. fall on other resources. I'm, I'm thinking that seeing that the writers groups and the people supporting each other, uh, people like us doing what we're doing and um, you know, the, the more resources you can provide and the more ways you can help other people, uh, not only does it help them, but it helps you because you feel, well, I may not be able to do what I want to do, but at least I'm doing something that makes a difference and is, is worthwhile. Yeah. And yeah. that just helps us in the process of survival. And so, here, you, here you are doing this in the, in the middle of the pandemic and spending your time so that other people can talk to, to writers. Thank you, Linda. Well, Hi. that's it. We want, we want to be able to, the whole reason we write is to share and, 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 mm. and to, to share things that we think uh, other people are going to enjoy. Yeah. And yeah. it's just another way to do that. I thank you so much for joining me today. Give us another look at that book cover of yours. Okay. And we can, you, your website is sarahsmith.com. sarahsmith.com. And if any of you are currently in the middle of publishing a book and need one more place to talk and read. I'm running a series called Tea Time Readings. You can look them up on YouTube at Tea Time Readings. <laughs> um, and you can go to tinyurl.com, sign up for Tea Time and sign up for a reading. There we go, that's great. Thanks so much, hope you'll come back again. Thank you so much, Linda. It's a pleasure to be here. And thank you all out there for listening. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.